think it wasn't a male, but it's woman, and he told her, gosh, I can't believe that happened. We get there, no joke, we're sitting, the priest gets up, it's about to start, and he's phone to go. <laughs> you couldn't even get to it fast enough, and I was like, hey, are you kidding? <laughs> Did you not just tell us the whole thing? Okay, so without further ado, um, the gratitude guide. Um, did you know that people that practice an attitude of gratitude have better relationships and feel less aches and pain? Yes, extensive clinical research has shown that individuals that are constantly grateful, enjoy, consistently grateful, enjoy a happier existence. David's been studying, speaking about, and living a life of gratitude for over 20 years. He has a thousand videos on YouTube, yes, a thousand on the subject of gratitude. He's a very, he calls himself the gratitude guy, no kidding. He has made over 650 presentations in the last seven years to champion and illustrate the incredible power of living with gratitude. Dave is an international best-selling author and has written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal and Six Word Lessons to Embrace Gratitude. So if you want better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health with fewer aches and pains, then you're going to want to pay close attention to what David has to teach us. Please join me in welcoming, from Seattle, Washington, the gratitude guy, David Burchard. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, everybody, for coming out early this morning. If you're not too uncomfortable, I would like, you ask, I'd like to ask you all to do a favor for me. If you would please stand if you've lost one or both of your parents. And please remain standing. Please stand if you have lost a spouse or a child. Please stand if you've lost someone close to you to suicide. Wow. And lastly, please stand if you've lost someone close to you to alcohol, drugs, or pills. Well, if you look around, it's about three quarters of the room. The people are still standing. I was thinking really fortunate because a lot of are loss, and you may sit down. I'm here today to talk about gratitude, as you heard Christina say. It's a mindset, it's an attitude that makes such a big difference. And I will tell you very, very briefly, I used to go into a lot of detail, some of my losses, and then I thought, you know, I want to get more to how am I going to help people in the room than talk more about the losses I have from my mom's death to cancer when I was younger, my father's suicide, my wife's death, and it was a prescription pill overdose that killed my wife, she was 38. My sons were 4 and 14 at the time. And then a number of other friends in high school, in car accidents, in Vietnam, and so on and so forth. A lot of loss. I started thinking to myself, at some point, I'm going to have to get a vehicle that's going to help me to survive. Because it's very easy. I was having a great conversation with Christina earlier about some of the things she's experienced, which she, of course, you all know about. And how do we survive those things? How do we survive really traumatic, really tough, tough things to get through and how, what's the mindset that we can do? Well, I'm here today to talk about gratitude as an aspect that can help you maybe more than other things. People try to find coping mechanisms. I ask people all the time, they've had a loss, what was your best coping mechanism? And so often, it unfortunately goes to smoking, drinking, drugs, booze, pills, all this, these, these things out here. And really, who am I to blame those people when all they're trying to do is just survive? But it does depend a lot on how you look at something. So I'd like you to all stand up again. As I, as I might mention earlier, this is a very interactive talk by yours truly. And I just want to talk about, I'm just going to show you something about how you look at something. So stand up, raise your right arm as high as you can, start turning in a clockwise manner. Now I will tell you I do this in junior highs. I have to do this. And I have to show people a watch to get what clockwise is they, they're, they're, wh which way is clockwise and they're talking to each other so clockwise up stretch as high as you can now start slowly bringing it down down to the top of your head forehead eyes nose chin chest waist what direction is it going now counterclockwise thank you you can sit down there's always that was Karen that got that right 
There'll be like two or 3,000 people. What direction is it going now? Everybody just looks at me. Does anybody want to take a shot at it? Is it clockwise? And there's always a few people too that are, that are still turning their, their figure out how did it change? And the fact of the matter is it didn't change. Your view of it changed. Above and below, clockwise, counterclockwise. But in addition to how you look at something, it is a choice. And I'll come back to that theme a few times today. It's a choice that you make to be happy, sad, up, down, left, right, black, red, whatever it might be. But it's a choice that you get to, every morning we wake up. Thank goodness we wake up. Now you get a choice whether you want to be left or right. What do you want to do? Do you want to look at it clockwise or counterclockwise? So for me, I decided a long time ago after Dana died, but really before that when I got into gratitude about understanding it is how you look at something. I used to do a lot of these 10K races, 6.2 miles, and I actually ran a marathon in 1981. I always wanted to do that, but there was a big floating bridge that goes across Lake Washington in Seattle. The 520 bridge, and Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos live on the same street, about five or six houses apart on the Medina side. So it started over by a golf course and went across the bridge, thousands and thousands of people. And then it went up the hill and it went into Husky Stadium, University of Washington, and ended inside the stadium. So I'm halfway across the bridge, not having a good race. And I look in front of me and I can see all these people up over this hill. And I go, holy oh cow, it was raining the day, not unlike today. Something we get all the time, of course, in Seattle. And so as I'm running along, kids are kind of like passing me and things, and I just kind of went, what am I doing here? And I'm trying to run as fast as I can. And I see all these people and I think, wait a second, let me look and see what's behind me. Now if you run and you know what it's like, it's hard to turn around and look behind you and see who's behind you. But I managed to look and it went all the way up to the end of the bridge, up to where the old toll plaza was, and then the Bedina, thousands of people. And it occurred to me at that very moment that if all these people in front of me were not here today, I would be in first place. I mean, what if they all just not call, just not, honey, I don't want to do the race. I don't want to come today. All those people, and they hadn't, I'd be in first place. How cool would that be? Well, it wasn't the case, but at least I looked at it in the right way. So, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for writing in your seats without having a table. A lot of times I do this, people are at uh, round tables and six foot tables and things, it's easier to write, so you're going to have to write in your lap a bit. But here's the first thing I want you to do, you got a three by five card. This is called the UR exercise. We're going to do, you got a three by five card and you're going to need a pen, the three by five card. And you're going to need a partner. So you may have to change a seat. And it's only this one exercise. So somebody may have to move a seat to get a partner. And it's only a couple of minutes, but. Everybody, anybody that doesn't have a partner needs to move. There's a gentleman in the back. There's this one in the back. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. All right. This is called. You can come right back, Karen. It's okay. This is called the UR exercise. Upper left hand corner of your card, write two words. U R Y O U A R E. U R, upper left hand corner of your card. Upper right hand corner of your card, write your partner's name. If you don't know them, introduce yourself. Put your name in the lower right hand corner. Same card. You should have one card. <laughs> so upper left hand corner you are, upper right hand corner your partner's name, and the lower right hand corner your name. And by the way, you might put the name. I think it's 211 today if I'm not mistaken, 21120. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. I just realized I got to get my phone to get my timer. I'll go get it. 60